We've all seen movies where characters die. If the film or show depicts a funeral, it could be at a church, but it could also be at a burial in a cemetery. There's a good chance it's raining. People are dressed in black and standing around a casket, most of whom are adults, but there are a few kids and at least one older woman crying. Perhaps she is being comforted by a relative. At the front stands a clergyman dressed in black or perhaps wearing priestly vestments. Have you noticed that a disproportionate amount of these funerals look rather Catholic? It's not just funeral scenes in movies and TV programs, it's possibly the majority of scenes involving Christianity in general. I'm not talking about Protestant Christian movies made by Protestant Christians for Protestant Christians, like the God's Not Dead films, the Jesus Movement, War Room, Courageous, and others. I'm talking about ordinary Hollywood movies made for general audiences. Ordinary movies and shows depict Catholic imagery and clergy disproportionate to the U.S. population. Even though the majority of religious people in the United States fall under the Protestant umbrella, including Baptists, non-denominational, evangelicals, mainline Protestants, Methodists, Lutherans like me, and so on, the Catholic Church seems to be the default version of Christianity shown in the movies. As an aside, many of these movies and shows get the Catholic religion wrong. I grew up in a Catholic household, although I am Lutheran now, but I'll leave that for other YouTubers to get into. The Sound and Fury YouTube channel is an entertainment channel focused mostly on movies. It is not a theology channel. So if you are Catholic, Protestant, Eastern Orthodox, or from another religious tradition, or you have no spiritual beliefs, I invite you to keep watching. This video is about the movies, not religion. I simply want to take a look at the phenomenon of Catholicism being so prevalent on screen, and I want to go over a few reasons why that might be the case. Before we get started, I want to thank you for watching the Sound and Fury YouTube channel. My name is Eric Wilford Watson. I'm the author of the supernatural crime thriller Judas Kissed, which by the way features an Anglican priest, and my contemporary science fiction thriller Becoming Quincy. Both books are available on Amazon.com. Before we get into why Catholicism is in so many movies and TV shows, let's talk about some examples to prove the point that this is a real phenomenon. The most obvious place where this can be seen is in the horror genre. Stephen King's Salem Lot, a Catholic priest fights vampires. Stephen King grew up as a Methodist, but does not attend church today. Yet Stephen King chose a Catholic priest for his story. Arguably the most famous horror movie Catholic priest was in The Exorcist. Mike Flanagan's television show on Netflix, Midnight Mass, is a horror story about a young Catholic priest putting what seems to be vampire blood in with the Holy Communion sacrament. Everyone on the island is Catholic, except for a small Muslim family. There are no Protestants or other churches. If you like horror, I would highly recommend this show. The hit television show Evil, which is also fantastic, is about a Catholic priest in training in the later seasons he's a full-on ordained priest, and a team of investigators look into purported miracles and demonic activity to see if they're legitimate or not. I wonder if the creative team even considered any other Christian denomination outside of Catholicism. Even in Arnold Schwarzenegger's End of Days movie from the 1990s, the Catholic Church is depicted. There are several other examples. Yet, this is not limited to the horror genre. Clint Eastwood's movie Gran Torino features a Catholic priest, and the movie begins and ends with a Catholic funeral. Clint Eastwood himself is not Catholic. The superhero Daredevil from Marvel is a devout Catholic. Countless television shows and movies show Catholic confessionals, everything from Alfred Hitchcock's I Confess movie to the Beavis and Butthead movie. When a random member of the clergy is needed as a small part in a movie or TV show, they seem disproportionately Catholic. In Law & Order, a priest may be a volunteer at a homeless shelter, and he's there to answer questions and point the cops to the suspect they need to talk to. In the show Reacher, Alan Richens' character of Reacher, who is not Catholic and is portrayed by a Protestant Christian actor, needs information on a certain neighborhood, so he visits a local Catholic church and talks with a priest. In the comedy Little Nicky, starring Adam Sandler, one of the devil's sons takes over a Catholic service and convinces the congregation to sin more. Most mafia movies, like The Godfather, will feature Catholic clergy. When ghosts run amok in the Ghostbusters movie, you see a Catholic archbishop in the mayor's office. 
the list goes on. Of course, this isn't 100% accurate all the time. Kevin McAllister from the Home Alone movie visits an Episcopal church, but of all the Protestant denominations, the inside of an Episcopal church will look the most like a Catholic church. There are countless other examples of Catholics and Catholic imagery being used in movies. Sister Act, The Da Vinci Code, Father Stu, Dogma, and so on. Now that you know what I mean about Hollywood using Catholic imagery more than Protestant imagery, let's go into some reasons why that might be. First, geography and ethnicity. Most movies take place in Los Angeles and New York. New York has a larger Catholic population by percentage than most of the rest of the United States. This is due, in part, to the large number of immigrants from Catholic countries such as Ireland and Italy. Los Angeles was originally settled by the Spanish and was eventually annexed by the United States from Mexico. Spain and areas conquered and colonized by the Spanish are largely Catholic. Modern Los Angeles does have slightly more Protestants than Catholics, but not by much. Los Angeles does have the largest Catholic archdiocese in the United States of America. By extension, movies that take place in New York or Los Angeles will feature more Catholics, in part because those areas are Catholic regions of the country. Even in movies not set there, because the Catholic Church is more visible in Los Angeles and New York than other parts of the country, filmmakers from those areas may think of Catholicism before they think of other versions of Christianity. The first imagery to come to mind to a filmmaker from Los Angeles or New York is more likely to be Catholic than from a filmmaker in other parts of the country such as the Deep South. That is also why the exception to the rule about Catholics in movies that take place in the American South. Forrest Gump singing in a predominantly black Baptist church comes to mind. The second reason why there are a lot of Catholics in the movies disproportionate to the U.S. population is that even though the majority of American Christians are Protestant, the Catholic Church dominates in numbers worldwide. Depending upon the source you look at, Catholics make up about half of Christians worldwide. A little less than 40% are Protestant, and the rest are Orthodox and other versions of Christianity. Movies are marketed outside of the United States, and movies featuring Christianity are not Christian movies, so it's usually easier just to show Catholics without having to explain anything about religion in the film. The third reason, and I think this is the biggest reason, is that Catholicism is a very visual religion, and movies are a visual art form. While many people associate the white clerical collar as a Catholic thing, it actually started with Presbyterians. Yet, many Presbyterian ministers today do not wear the clerical collar. Many Protestants will simply wear a suit and tie. If a filmmaker wants to show a Protestant pastor in a movie, unless someone calls him or her pastor, the pastor could be confused for a business person or a regular member of the congregation. Presbyterians do not use crucifixes or images of Jesus. Aside from Lutherans and Anglicans, one would not likely see ornate stained glass windows, gothic buildings, statues of the saints, paintings of biblical events, or clergy wearing an alb or vestments apart from Catholicism. For visual storytelling, be it a funeral, or a member of the clergy at a homeless shelter, or in a protest march, or whatever the case may be, Catholic stuff just stands out more visually. The storytelling adage of show, don't tell seems to apply here. A Catholic priest is more instantly recognizable than a non-denominational pastor in a polo shirt and khakis, even if that pastor is holding a Bible. The last reason for this Hollywood phenomenon is the fact that the Catholic Church is older than Protestant churches. Now, I can already hear people in the comment section preparing to type up theological arguments that Protestantism is the restoration of the early church, while Catholics might want to make the other point, but that's not what this YouTube channel is about. But the fact is, the Vatican is really, really old. Take the movie Mission Impossible 3, for example. Tom Cruise's character needed to sneak into the Vatican. He dressed like a Catholic priest and went over the Vatican wall. That scene would have looked a lot different if he had to sneak into the Southern Baptist Convention headquarters in Nashville, Tennessee. In the show Evil, there are ancient artifacts from the Vatican. That is just more believable from a storytelling perspective than if it came from storage in a non-denominational megachurch somewhere in suburban Dallas. 
If a movie or character is going through a rough patch in life and they want to pray alone, a Catholic church has more stuff to put in the camera frame than a typical Protestant church will. That isn't the filmmaker making a theological point, the filmmaker just wants the movie to look good. And at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. The filmmaker wants to portray their movie and make it look good and make it understandable, and the Catholic Church serves that purpose. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do Catholic priests and churches get featured more often in secular entertainment than Protestants do? If so, do you agree with my reasons why? If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and please keep the comments about the movies, not theology. Thank you for watching Sound and Fury.